We respect the day, dear Zuko, dear brothers and sisters, and dear friends. Today, 28th of December, the year 2023, we are in the Assembly Star Meditation Hall of Low Hamlet. Uh, we only had a few days before we end the year to welcome the new year. And this season is the season to uh, come in, uh, to come home. The home of the blood family and the home of the spiritual family. So we come here to celebrate together, to enjoy the practice together as a whole a spiritual family. And we are so lucky that we had the spiritual uh, family for us to enjoy, to practice, to be back. And on top of that, we had the home here in our body. Our body is the home for our soul to stay with. So when we go, we come home to our body, we don't need to run anywhere else. Every time I come home, I feel so peaceful. I feel so relaxed, so at ease and very happy. And when I came, I come home to my body, I want to stay there <laughs> as long as I can. I don't want to do anything else. I don't want to go anywhere else. Just sit there to enjoy. And when I do sit in meditation, I also come back to myself, to my home. So I hope that everyone can come home to your body to enjoy the present moment, to enjoy the sensation of your body, and also enjoy the surrounding, enjoy the Sangha, the beauty of the Sangha, the beauty of the nature. Coming home doesn't mean that we only stay here to enjoy our body, but we can enjoy the nature, we can enjoy the beauty, we can enjoy the Sangha. Sitting among many, many people, but still we can come back to ourselves and to enjoy ourselves. And if we know how to come back to ourselves, to take good care of our, about our body, we don't feel lonely. There are some people who feel lonely, even we sit among many, many people. We sit among many people, but we still feel lonely because we cannot connect with our body. We can connect with our mind, and we can connect with the people around us. And it is why we suffer. So come back to spiritual family, we learn how to connect, to connect with ourselves, to connect with nature, with beauty, and with people around us. And when we know how to connect with people, we'll happy, we'll be happy. And happiness is something that everyone wants to have, right? <laughs> What is the purpose of coming here? Can someone answer my question? <laughs> Do you come here because of your joy, your happiness? Right? Yeah, I think that everyone come here because of joy and happiness. Or you come here because you want to um, find a way to go out of suffering and difficulty, right? So it's the same purpose. When you have the capacity to go out of suffering and difficulty, you will be happy and joyful. So the happiness is the most important. 
the most important thing to do in our daily life, right? And do you prioritize for your happiness in your daily life? You think that the happiness is the most important for you. So do you prioritize for your happiness? Or you let the busy life carry you the way and you lose yourself? So everyone had to ask ourselves this question. Do we prioritize for our happiness? I remember that one day, they, our teacher, yes, Master Thich Nhat Hanh, if you don't know him, so he's uh, our teacher. One day he taught us how to cook. <laughs> you may surprise her. You may surprise how Jens Mater can teach us how to cook. Jens Mater can teach how to meditate, how to uh, learn uh, sutra, how to translate the sutra, how to give the teaching, how to organize the retreat, how to dwell in the present moment. How can he has time to teach us how to cook? But he did. <laughs> during the lazy days. So you come here uh, to practice, and every week we had the one lazy day. Do you enjoy the lazy day? Yes, everyone, right? Do you want to have more lazy days? <laughs> you are welcome to Plum Village to stay for one year and two years to have long lazy days. But if you come here for a week or two weeks, you only have the one lazy day per week. But as a monastic, we have the 10 continuous lazy days or sometimes 15 continuous lazy days. After uh, winter and after summer retreat, we have the 10 lazy day. And we just enjoy ourselves. Is it luxury <laughs> to have 10 lazy days doing nothing? And we did. And I remember that one time when we had the 10 lazy day, a uh, group of us, younger sisters, came to the hermitage where our teacher stayed. And we stayed there to practice together, to be together, play, uh, play together. And one day they came to teach us how to cook. That day he uh, taught us how to cook the, how to steam the vegetable and tofu. And we brought out uh, many kinds of vegetable. And he and we wash it, and then he he chopped the vegetable. And he asked us the question, what is the, most, what is the most important when we are cooking? So what is the most important when we cook? <laughs> I think that we, all of you know how to cook, right? So what is the most important? What is the most important thing when we are cooking? Cook with love. Good? Huh? To enjoy, yes, to enjoy. To cook, just to cook. Yeah. Who else? Huh? Breathe. And who else? What else? Huh? Uh, to be present. Yeah. You are so brave. At that moment, I didn't dare <laughs> to answer this question <laughs> because I'm afraid that I get in trap. <laughs> <laughs> Zen master, when he asked us the question, we had to be very careful. <laughs> For example, when he saw us to do something and he asked us, what are you doing? And you say that, oh, I'm... Um, Peeling the carrots or I'm um, uh, mopping the floor, it is not the right answer because he saw us what we are doing already. How can we answer that we are peeling the carrot and 
or we mop in the floor. So at that time, I kept silent. I didn't dare to answer. And do you know what they said? They said that the most important thing is to be happy right away when you are chopping vegetable, when you are washing vegetable, and when you are cooking. Don't wait until the dish is finished to be happy. And I practicing with his teaching. Whenever I cook, I cook with my happiness. And I practice to do the same with other things. When I do something, I also try to do with my happiness. And today, I also uh, prepared my talk with my happiness. I prioritize my happiness. Of course, in our daily life, sometimes we are happy, sometimes we are not happy, right? We are not always happy. It is a life. And to practice mindfulness is not always be happy. But we know how to deal with all the mental formation arising in us. We know how to deal with the situation, how to deal with the suffering, how to deal with the difficulty. And when we know how to deal with the situation, with suffering and with difficulty, we are peaceful. And when we are peaceful, we are happy. That's all. So please don't be afraid of your suffering or difficulty to learn how to deal with them. And if you know, you want to know how to deal with them, you may, you have to understand where is state in our body and in our mind. So today we may learn a little bit about our brain <laughs> to see where our um, emotion state Everyone uh, has 100 billion neurons in our brain. So scientists let us know that everyone has 1 uh, billion neurons in our brain. But they are, they are apportioned differently in each person. Some more in the left um, hemisphere, some more on the right, some more in the um, frontal lobe, some more in the temporal lobe, etc. So because the neuron is apportioned differently, so everyone has different talent. Someone good at the math, someone good at the language, Someone good at the um, music, someone good at the uh, uh, drawing. So it is why we cannot demand everyone do the same, because everyone has a different talent. So in our family, sometimes we ask a question, why you don't do this, why you don't do that? Why I'm only the one who do this, I'm only the one who do that. And we create the trouble, right? But we have to know that everyone has different um, talent. And we have to understand this in order that we can value the people, we can um, treasure the the talents of our daughter, our son, and we water the goodness in them in order that it can flourish, especially our children. And everyone develop their best, their talent, and they contribute 
to their life and to society, and they become happy because they can contribute their talent uh, to the family, to the uh, society. And also, we have to understand uh, where where the emotion come from. I'm sure the marker is work well, so I bring mine. So that is the brain stem. Đây là thâm não. That is the brain stem. It regulates our heart rate and um, breathing, blood pressure. That is the cerebellum. It's um, the function as a movement and also coordination. And that is the lipid system function as um, emotion brain. So emotion come from here. <laughs> and it is the cerebral cortex. It function like uh, learning, uh, analyzing, like you learn language, etc. Learning, analyzing, mm, developing. For you, it's easy to see. And a special this here is uh, prefrontal cortex. It's function as a well awareness, analyzing, comparing, um, reasoning, learning, etc. And here we have the amygdala. And here we have the thalamus. Here we have hippocampus. So the information come to our body from the eyes, from the ear, uh, from our body, will come to the thalamus. Thalamus is like relay station. It comes there before it sends the, Im the information to other places. Like it sends the information to a middle, to the hippocampus or prefrontal cortex. And prefrontal cortex is realize, analyze, and then it also sends a message to amygdala. And amygdala is the emotion uh, area. For example, the anger, it also comes from amygdala. The fear is also come from amygdala. And even happiness. So it is function as a emotion 
uh, emotional uh, area is come from here. For example, when you see the smoke, you may feel you may be very fearful because you experience many many cases of uh, house burning. And when you see smoke, you feel very fearful. So when you see smoke, it comes here and it sends a message here. And you feel very, very fearful. And you try to either run away or do something to prevent from burning. Or you may run away right away. But then it also sent a message to prefrontal cortex and it's realized that it reason and analyzing and realize that oh that smoke may come from um, the incense burning so we are safe so we are peaceful or in the kitchen someone um, pray something and they forgot to take it out and it's burning so that's it so we are safe and some case is more serious and we become very fearful and sometimes become our body become very stiff and here is a place that we fight or we fly when the dangerous come we are ready to run away to fly or we fight for the situation for example, when someone says something made you angry, so you're ready to say something back right away. It is from a middle. Right, react right away. Even the prefrontal cortex doesn't have time to interfere yet. But later on, it in interfere. It's okay, the situation is okay, for example. Uh, it's also like that with the fear. And with people who um, who has trauma, the amygdala and prefrontal cortex are damaged. So it is why they don't um, master their emotion well. Sometimes they cannot control their emotion because the amygdala and prefrontal cortex are damaged. So to deal with the situation, to deal with the, the emotion, we have two ways. One from uh, bottom up is follow your breathing. We follow our breathing in order that we can embrace the emotion or we can follow our movements when we walk or when we brush our teeth when we do um, everything else and another way is from top down this means that you use the prefrontal cortex to observe to see if the situation is dangerous or not do we wait a moment before we react? So it is um, two ways that we um, heal ourselves when we had the wound or when we had the trauma. When we had the trauma, we try to practice mindfulness. Mindfulness is also the way from top down. Use the prefrontal cortex uh, to observe the the emotion. So that is what the scientists say. I just repeat it. <laughs> but going back to thousands of years ago, when science wasn't developed yet, to see how Buddha taught us about the mind. The Buddha said that the main key to happiness is the training and mastering of the mind. 
the key to happiness is the training and mastering our mind. There is nothing that leads to happiness where the mind is um, cultivated, is developed, is tamed, is guarded, is protected, and is restrained. And why there is nothing leads to such harm and suffering as the mind is undeveloped, uncultivated, and aimed, unguarded, and unrestrained. But how? How can we develop, cultivate, and train, and tame, and protect, and protect, and restrain our mind? So our mind have two parts. It is the simplest way I explain. It is also the simple for us, uh, simple enough for us to understand. And also I explain the mind uh, as simple as I can for us to understand. If we want to understand more, so maybe uh, we need a course, uh, a month to understand about our mind or understand our brain. Our brain is very complicated. <laughs> We need time to study. So it is the same with our mind. So our, our mind, there are two, two parts. Upper parts we call um, my consciousness. And under we call store consciousness. And all the stay here in the store consciousness, like joy, happiness, peace, freedom, love and kindness, understanding, forgiveness, and also hatred, uh, despair, suffering, and all the negative and positive stay here. For example, when you are sitting here, you feel very peaceful, right? But reset um, mm, the anger also stay here, but because it doesn't manifest yet, so you thought that oh you are not angry at all, but in fact that it all stay here. The fear, the loneliness is also stay here. It doesn't manifest here yet, but it stay here. So whenever we we look with our eye, it may touch the cyst here. For example, the, the fear, and the fear come up. You feel very fearful. So when you feel very fearful, if you don't practice well, so you make the root here become stronger and stronger and stronger. For example, when you see smoke, if you don't embrace the, your fear, so maybe you feel very fearful, you thought that maybe it's the house burning, for example. Or you hear the sound uh, the sound of the cat, you, you thought, you may think that the baby is crying and you feel very fearful, but in fact that is the cry of the cat. The fear comes up and if you don't um, observe it, maybe it's very strong here. So when you hear something strange, when you see something strange, you feel very fearful. And it is the same what you whatever you hear what you smell what you taste what you touch by your body 
or even the mind can touch the sit here. What you think also touch the sit here. Thinking. Thinking may be very complicated, right? <laughs> it can touch the seat here and make you suffer or happy. So we have to be very careful. And if the, you touch the, uh, you hear something make you happy or touch the compassion, it's manifest here as a happy person. Like this morning, if you see the sunrise, it's so beautiful, right? And make you very happy. And the happiness manifests here. And with the practice, when we have the fear comes up, we invite the mindfulness to come up here, to embrace the fears. Mindfulness is the heart of the practice, the heart of the meditation. We cannot meditate without mindfulness. So we always cultivate mindfulness when we are walking. Pay attention to your step. You don't need to think anything else. Just enjoy the present moment. Be aware of the contact between your feet and the floor. Enjoy the nature around. So whatever you are doing, just pay attention 100% to your movement. When I ride on the ball, I also aware of my movement, of the movement of my hand. When I brush my teeth, I also aware of movement of my hand. I want to practice uh, brushing my hair, uh, my, my teeth. I look at to the mirror and smile to myself and enjoy brushing teeth. So it is a way we cultivate mindfulness <coughs> On Tuesday at Low Hamlet, we practice by touching the earth, touching the earth is we, we uh, go back to touch our, to be in touch with our blood family, a spiritual family, the land ancestor. We send energy to our beloved one and also send energy to ones who cause us to suffer. And when I do walk in meditation, I also feel the whole my blood ancestors in me, walk with me. I don't walk alone. I carry in my cell, in my every cell of my body, my blood ancestors and also spiritual ancestors. And I become very huge. I am not alone. I carry in me my teachers, my Buddha, my Sangha, and also my parents, grandparents, my brothers and sister, and I walk like that with me. So it is a way we cultivate mindfulness. We are not alone. And we practice five thirteen the earth is not only in the prostration posture, but when we can practice five thirteen the earth when we do walking or even when we are eating. We don't eat by ourselves only, but we eat with our whole blood ancestor lineage, the whole spiritual ancestor lineage. We don't eat alone. So whatever we are doing, we can invite our blood ancestor do with us. We invite the spiritual ancestor do with us. And slowly, slowly, day by day, we don't feel lonely anymore. So it is a way we cultivate mindfulness. And mindfulness becomes very strong in our store consciousness. Even when we sleep, store consciousness 
and also working. My consciousness cannot not working, but store consciousness working day and night. So it is why what we receive is very important because the store consciousness can do the work for you again. So it is the same. The scientists let us know that when we sleep, our brain still working. And our brain can learn again whatever we have learned during the day. So make sure that you have enough sleep. Huh? And whatever you brought into your body is very important because your brain can learn, can work again and again whatever you are you have brought into your body, even when you are sleeping. So we invite the mindfulness to come up to embrace the fear. And slowly, slowly, you become relaxed. And instead of fear, you can smile to yourself. The fear disappears and you become relaxed, you can smile to yourself. And you know what happened. When you can smile to yourself, the fear is diminished, and also the root here is weaker, and weaker, and weaker. And next time, when you see the same thing happen, you hear the same thing happen, you don't fear anymore. You don't fear, you don't feel fearful because the mindfulness come up to embrace us already. And even the mindfulness here before the fear comes up because you prepare yourself with mindfulness. You equip yourself with mindfulness and mindfulness protect you. And you know, not only we invite the mindfulness come up to embrace fear, but even when you are happy, you should invite mindfulness to embrace your happiness too. You invite the mindfulness up to embrace your happiness in order that the happiness become larger and larger. It become more and more peaceful. Sometimes we're happy, but we are not so peaceful. We are so excited, right? And because of excitement, sometimes that happiness is not totally correct. It doesn't... Um, bring joy and happiness for other people around. It, bring, it doesn't bring happiness in the future. But with mindfulness, we are aware of our happiness and our joy. Is it benefit for us in the present moment? Is it benefit for us in the future? Is it benefit for people around us when we are happy? And is it benefit for people in the future? So thanks to mindfulness. And I think that many of us have experienced that. When we suffer, we are more mindful than we are happy. <laughs> With our practice, when we are suffering, we let our suffering carry us away and we lose the present moment. But with the practice, when we suffer, we go back to ourselves and embrace our suffering. And we are very mindful. But when we are happy, we are so excited and sometimes too excited 
and we forgot to practice the mindfulness. So with the practice, we invite the mindfulness to come even when we are happy and joyful. And we will make the happiness more solid. Happiness is always with you. You are happy easier with the people around you, with the beauty surrounding you, with your good quality inside of you. You can be happy with yourself. You accept yourself as you are. And you're happy with that. Is our teacher used to say that when you come to Plum Village, if you cannot master the breathing, your breath, your step, and your smile, it means that you haven't come to Plum Village yet. So everyone come here, you have, you have to master your breathing. When you suffer, when you are joyful, when you are happy, master your breathing. And also your step. Wherever you walk, go back to yourself, go back to the present moment, and enjoy your step you make. Don't walk with your future plan. <laughs> Sometimes I see that if we think of something in the dining hall, we want to come there for a meal, or we want to come there to take something. So our head always go before our feet. <laughs> it means that we don't dwell in the present moment. We think about what we are, what we will do in the present, uh, in the future but not dwell in the present. But with the practice, we have to dwell in the present moment. Happy right away in the moment you are doing things. Don't wait until you finish. Don't wait, un don't wait until you achieve something to be happy. Be happy right away. And we practice smile. Smile not only when you are happy and joyful, but smile even when you are angry. You can smile to yourself. When you suffer, you can smile to yourself. When you are fearful, you can smile to yourself. Because when you smile, you relax your body. Even smile is not so fresh yet. But when you smile, you relax your body. Especially if you let every cell in your body smile, your whole body will relax. And when you relax, your body relax, your mind will relax. Because your body and mind relate to each other, relate to each other very closely. Whatever happened, to our mind, it affects our body. Whatever happens to our body, it affects our mind. So just smile. And smile proves that you have mindfulness. Whatever happened, we don't know. But when you have the capacity to smile, we know that you are okay. Everything will be okay if we had capacity to smile. So we smile not only with the beauty, with joy, with happiness, but we can smile with our suffering difficulty, with all the emotion we have. Just smile and embrace emotion. Everything will be okay. Taste our teacher 
uh, wrote a calligraphy for us to practice. Breathe. It will be okay. Everything will be all right. Just breathe. Just smile. And I remember that every time, many times, when Thais, our teacher, gave the um, public talk for 1,000 people, and after the talk, uh, they invited Sư Cô Chân Không come up to sing a song for 1,000 people. And I was so impressed. <laughs> the whole, whole uh, vibrated at that moment. And today, I'm so lucky to have Sư Cô here, and Sư Cô accept my invitation to come up here to sing uh, a song for us. So we are very uh, happy and lucky to have Suko here. And I would like to invite Suko to sing a song for us. I smile to stars. <laughs> and we can make this moment uh, alive forever. I, um, I was in um, the uh, public talk. And when they call Suko come up to sing a song, I was so happy and impressed. And every time I think of that moment, I was so happy and feel lucky. And this moment can be forever for you. Every time you think of this moment, you'll be very happy. Every time you have the uh, difficulty or suffering to think about this moment, so you will be uh, happy. Thank you so much, Suko. <laughs> I will smile to the star that still shine in the sky, to the sun that slowly guides us out of the night, to the day that begins, to the enchanting burden. I smile to the world and the world smile to me. I smile to the child that crosses my way. I remember also on those who are hungry, those who live in misery all over the planet, who have to face the world who lost their mother. If sometime my smile is moistened by a tear, when I see the great pain that spread over the world, I still be, be smiling with tears in my eyes, smiling to life smiling to death. And one day will come when it is bitterly cold, when even my footstep will not leave any mark. The never-ending current of life's energy will carry me along and I would not look back. The fear will no longer block my way. My heart finally opens very wide. Then I will become the smile of the earth, of the flower, of the rain, of the sun and the wind. And one day, perhaps, in a very small child, I will open my eye to the many wonders of life and a little more loving and a little more smiling. I will continue this wonderful way. Je souris à l'étoile qui au ciel encore lui, au soleil 
qui lentement nous sort de la nuit. À ce jour qui commence, à l'oiseau qui m'enchante, je souris au monde et le monde me sourit. Je souris à l'enfant qui vient sur mon chemin. Je pense aussi à tous ceux qui ont faim, ceux qui loin dans ce monde vivent dans la misère, qui ont connu la guerre, qui ont perdu leur mère. Si parfois mon sourire se mouille de pleurs en voyant dans ce monde une profonde de douleur. Je veux sourire encore à travers mes pleurs. Sourire à la vie. Sourire à la mort. Et un jour peut-être dans un quand il fera très froid, où je ne laisserai plus la trace de mes pas, par le courant de la vie qui jamais ne s'arrête, me laisserai-je entraîner sans regarder derrière. La peur alors ne fermera plus le chemin. Mon cœur tout grand s'ouvrira encore et un peu plus aimant, un peu plus, plus aimant, je continuerai ce beau chemin et un jour viendra où il fera très froid où je ne laisserai plus la trace de mes pas, par le courant de la vie qui je jamais ne s'arrête, me laisserai-je entraîner sans regarder derrière. La peur alors ne fermera plus le chemin, mon cœur tout grand sourire. Ah, enfin, je deviendrai alors le sourire de la terre, de la fleur, de l'oiseau, de la pluie et du vent. Et un jour peut-être, dans un tout petit enfant, je ouvrirai les yeux aux merveilles de la vie. Et un peu plus aimant, un peu plus souriant, je continuerai ce beau chemin. And one day will come, when it is bitterly cold, I will open my eyes to the many wonders of life. And a little more loving, and a little more smiling. I will continue this wonderful way together with you. Thank you, Sugo. So smile, breath, and step are three things that you can, blow, you can bring along with you wherever you are. So there is the three uh, basic practice that you can bring along with you wherever you are. Tomorrow, many of you live here. Uh, so make sure that you uh, bring them along with you. And wherever you have the difficulty, suffering, just make sure that they stay along with you. When we have the deep wound and we come back, and if you run away, if, if you want to run away, remember these three things. We suffer because we don't feel the connection 
with other people. So it is why we had to go back to connect. You know, when you smile to me, you create the happy neural pathway in my brain. Because when I receive information, it creates the neural pathway in my brain, in your brain. Everyone had uh, 100 billion neurons, neurons, and we, everyone, every neuron has a 150,000 connection. So when I receive some information, it creates many neuron pathway in my brain. So when you smile to me, you create the happy neuron pathway in myself. So when you smile to the people around you, you have to create the happy neural pathway in them. And sometimes we don't need to do anything, but we bring a lot of peace, a lot of joy, a lot of happiness to other people. So it is why our being is very important. Our being very important. For me, I prioritize my happiness, my peace, my freedom, and the present moment. So every time I suffer or have difficulty, I make sure that I'm in the present moment. I'm sure that I am peaceful even I go through the suffering and difficulty. I have to make sure that I am free. And I ask myself, do you suffer enough? And the answer very clearly, yes, yes I suffer even more than enough. And I don't want to suffer more. And when the answer comes up in my mind, the suffering disappears. When I ask myself, do you suffer enough? Yes, I suffer enough, more than enough. So certainly the suffer is gone. So you may ask yourself that question. Do you suffer enough? Why you suffer more? Why you want to suffer more? You don't suffer enough? So we should ask ourselves this question. So present moment, peace and freedom. are three things that I always ask myself. Do I enjoy in the present moment? Am I free? I am peaceful? I like simplicity. So it is why I like three basic practices. We say that very basic but very profound. More than 20 years of practice as a nun, I still practice breath, step, and smile. And I always to be, to make sure that I am in the present moment, to be peaceful and free. And if I see that I have this thing, I'm sure that I'm okay. And it is what I practice again and again and again. So when we have this quality, we can offer a lot to other people, the people around us, your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife, your beloved one. Sometimes we want to offer them joy, happiness. We want to offer them love. But because our being is not so solid, is not so peaceful, is not so free, so we cause them to suffer. Even we say that we care for them, we love them, but we cause them to suffer. So 
to go back to train ourselves to be mindful, to be peaceful, to be free is very important. And we have to see the connection between ourselves and other people. We are related to each other. When we are happy, other people will be happy. When we are peaceful, other people will be very peaceful. Sometimes we don't need to do anything to help other people to be happy or peaceful, but just our quality radiate around and people uh, will understand, will accept, will receive naturally. And we can be happy with the joy, with the happiness, with the peaceful too. As a young people, we always want to be on top up, <laughs> on top of the class. We want to be number one, to be happy. But in fact, that we don't need it, right? Because we relate to each other. Today I give talk. It's thanks to our sister who cook today, work hard in the kitchen. Thanks to you cleaning the toilet. So people come here, and they use the cleaning toilet, and they feel happy. So many, many elements made this day manifest. I remember that uh, one day um, when I went out in the tour, a teaching tour with Thay in US, it is the first time I came with Thay. And I received Thay's letter. And when I read this letter, I was so happy. And now I would like to read to you for you to enjoy. G.F. Kennedy Dormitory, University of Massachusetts, 13 August 2001. My dear Hoi Nguyen, this is the first time we have, we have you joy with Thay and the Sangha in the teaching tour in North America. They feel very joyful whenever they think about it. They is sure that you will be able to gain many learning experiences during the trip, not only from the Sangha, but also from the friends and collaborators who have come to practice with us. They also trust that you will have many moments of joy while harmonizing, harmonizing yourself with the practice and the services alongside the Sangha. All the while enjoying offering your freshness and solidity to everyone around. The friends who come to practice with us are our very own field of seeds. They are us. They are the fields of merits of the Buddha. We have the responsibility to take care of it, protect it, aerate it, sow seeds and water them. Each of your breath and your step, made in mindfulness, all have the effect of planting wholesome seeds, tending and watering that field, you have the capacity to do it. They have confidence that we have the ability to offer much happiness to everyone. With you alongside me, I feel I have more strength, and I know you already have pay in you. Recognizing the presence of happiness is the purpose of this letter. You are welcome to share your happiness with all the brothers and sisters who are here with you. Your teacher, Thay. So you come here, not only you receive the, the teaching from us, but we also benefit from your practice. You know how happy I was at that moment. I was so happy as if my soul fly to the sky. <laughs> I thought that I'm very special, very unique. I received especially the letter from Thay, 
And they said that you should share this happiness with other brothers and sisters. And I also share my happiness with my brothers and sisters. And I discovered that not only myself received this letter, <laughs> but every brother and sister who are first time come with they receive this letter, the same content, only different name. <laughs> But you know, I was even more happy because I see, I saw that they were so special. <laughs> they're so unique, they're so lovable. And we love him very much. And not only myself, but our, our brothers and sisters also had the same idea with me. And we laugh and laugh and laugh. We discover that not only we <laughs> receive this letter alone, but everyone who at the first time, who was the first time go out with they receive the same letter. We were so happy and funny. But you know that this me a meaningful lesson. I don't need to be number one to be happy. And he, it helped me to let go the arrogant in me. I have to be number one. I have to be on the top to be happy. No, I don't need that. I don't need to be number one to be happy. I can be happy with my brothers and sisters. I can be happy with other people, with all of you to be here. Of course, everyone has different talent and we contribute our talents to the Sangha, to society, but we don't need to be number one to be happy. And I don't prioritize my number one. I prioritize my happiness my present moment, my peace, and my freedom. And it is a way to practice the non-self. It is a big lesson for me. Because before, as young one, I always want number one to be number one, to be on top of, to be better than this person, to be better than other person. But in fact that, that caused me a lot of suffering. But when I had the capacity to release all this ego, I can be free and I can be happy. So it is a non-self. We are made of non us element. I am met up my, by my, my parents, the food, the drink, Mother Earth, societies, and also I'm made up by you. Because if you are not here, I cannot stand here to give the talk today. You are the field of merit that I sow, we sow the seeds and take care of it, to water it. And you come here, practice, and also you contribute your practice, the peaceful energy to the Sangha too. And I can enjoy your joy and your happiness. Your joy and your happiness is not separate from our joy and our happiness. And I always carry the spirit along with me. And the second practice I used to think about and practice is impermanence. Everything can be changed. Everything will be changed. 
So it is why we are not caught in the way we are thinking, because it may change. We are aware that because of impermanence, our parents cannot live with us forever, so we should take good care of them. Our beloved one cannot stay with us forever, so it is why we should take good care of them in order that they don't, we don't feel regret later on. My father, who passed away already at the beginning of this year, but a um, few years before, he was weak, and we are aware, we are aware that he uh, wouldn't live with us long, so we try our best to take good care of him. Every, our brothers and sisters take good care of my father, because we are aware that he would not live with us long, and we live wholeheartedly with him. In order that when he passed away, we don't feel regret. But of course, sometimes in our daily life, here and there, we have some few, few things that we feel regret, and we practice the letting go. Because it may be beyond our capacity. I remember that last few years of my uh, father, Last pen. Uh, he had the pen when he go. He, he went to PP. I don't know the the English name. So it is why the doctor didn't allow him to drink tea, and we didn't allow him to drink tea. But he really loved tea. <laughs> Sometimes when his uh, friends came to visit him, he said to our brother and sister that offer tea to uncle and auntie. We, uh, our family call my father's uh, friend, auntie, and uncle to see uh, them as our relative. And um, he always say that offer them tea because when we offer them tea, we offer him tea. <laughs> It's very uh, joyful. My, my father lived a joyful and happy life. Uh, so time to time, we also offer him tea, but not much, not many. And last time when I came home, I have good tea. My sister offered to me. And I say that this time I will offer him tea because he would not live with us long, so I want to, I want to offer him whatever he like. And I say that for New Year, I will offer him tea. But that moment didn't come. Because I didn't offer him tea right away, I came back, but I wait for the New Year, because the New Year is very important moment. Is a moment the whole family uh, union. But before that, he got sick, seriousness, and he got to the hospital. And I never had a chance to offer him tea before he passed away. I felt regret too. <laughs> but it's a kind of practice. But it helped me to be more aware about impermanent. We have to live deeply with the present moment. We have to live deeply with the people in front of us, with the people we encounter. Because we never know. We thought that he may leave us more few months or few years. In fact, that only a few days later, he got sick and passed away. So sometimes in our daily life, we have some small regret like that, and we practice with it. But it also helps us to 
be aware more about impermanence. And I aware that we suffer because we um, distinguish between bad and good, negative and positive, long and short, ugly and beauty. So it is why we suffer. Wrong and right. Sometimes in our family, father and mother argue with each other because they thought that they are right. And others also thought that they are right. And children stand between, don't know what happened. They suffer because parents argue with each other. And we don't know which is right or wrong. And we see that right or wrong is not important. Why our parents argue with each other and cause each other to suffer? So we sometimes get caught in our notion. So we have to transcend that notion to be happy, to free ourselves. And when we have the capacity to overcome, to free ourselves from that notion, we become happy. It is nirvana. Nirvana is to distinguish the notion. Right or wrong is not important. Ugly or beauty is not important. Long or short is not important. But our happiness is the most important. This flower stay here on the right or on the side, on the left is not important. Here also beautiful. On the right is also beautiful, on the left is also beautiful. Why they have to always stay on the right? They can be stay on the left. But we usually caught in the right or the left and the right or wrong, wrong. So it's why we suffer. So we have to had the capacity to free ourselves from this notion. So that is the uh, three Dharma seal. Help me to live with what I'm doing, I'm living, I'm behaving. I always ask myself, if I do it according with the non-self, with impermanence or with nirvana? And the answer say yes. So I'm sure that I am in the wrong way. And all the teaching that doesn't contain the three Dharma seal is not the Buddha teaching. So to make sure that what we are practicing is correct or not, so we have to base on these elements, non-self, impermanence, and nirvana. And three, 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 three. <laughs> it is my practice. Always go back to three basic practice. Always to go back with these three elements uh, to see how my practice is and always go back with three Dharma seals to see, to make sure that what I'm practicing is correct. Mm, yesterday, I had the consultation. I offered the consultation with the one lay friend. And he asked me, sometimes I feel um, Paradoxical, paradoxical, right? Um, I don't know what to do. Sometimes we say that we do nothing. <laughs> but when I do nothing, I don't feel um, um, valuable. 
Sometimes we say that we have to be lazy, but sometimes we have to say that we have to to be diligent. <laughs> so we don't know what to do. I don't know if you had the same you know, feeling. You don't know what to do. Because sometimes we say that we have to be lazy. And at Plum Village, we also had the lazy. They always ask us to do nothing. But when I do nothing, the brother and sister are not happy with me. <laughs> when they always say that we have to dwell in the present moment, take time to do it. And when I peel the carrot, I peel slowly and the sister asked me to do, to do quickly. If you do slowly, how can you cook for hundreds of people who come here for mindfulness day? You have to do quick. And we become confused. We don't know what to do. If you are in this situation, please raise your hand. <laughs> many, many, almost everyone. Me too. At the beginning, I also fall in that situation. And sometimes the sister asks me to do this, or the sister asks me to do that. I, I don't know. I become confused. But if we practice for a while, we become balanced between do nothing and doing something. Become lazy and diligent. Like when you come here, you only had the one lazy day, right? And one lazy day is enough. If you have more lazy day, you become lazy and we become passive, we are not active. So one lazy day maybe is enough. But if you stay longer, maybe you serve more and you become more tired. <laughs> you have 10 lazy days. <laughs> no, I just joking. Huh? Yeah, but thanks to practice, slowly, slowly, we can be balanced. And we go in the middle way. Because everyone have the different capacity. Maybe we don't have the same mm, thing for everyone. So we have to know how we practice in our practice. How much thing, how many things we do is enough for you? How many time for you to be lazy? for you to go back to yourself. And you have to go back to yourself and understand that. How diligent you are. If your diligent made you become tense, so maybe you had to take one or two days off. Because practice with tension is not good. So you have to understand yourself, your body, in order that you know when you practice diligently, what, how much diligent you are, enough for you to do with. And it all is the training. We have to train ourselves to understand ourselves. And if you want to train ourselves, we have to do every day. We cannot do on and off, on and off, but do it continuously. So when you go home, if you want to, to bring the practice home, you need to maintain it every day. Don't do much. You don't need to do sitting meditation like one hour per day. You don't need it. First of all, you, if you uh, want, so maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes per day, but do it every day. It's better than one day I take one hour to do sitting meditation and after 10 days you drop it. <laughs> Just do a little by little, but do it every day. And if you feel tired, so maybe you offer yourself one lazy day. 
Like, oh, today is a lazy day. I don't need to do sitting, for example. But some people, they do more. So it also depends on the capacity of each person. If your capacity allows you to do one hour, it's good. Huh? It's good. Or even two hours, it's, it's good. But it depends. But if you are new in the practice, you don't need to do just long. Just enough for you to enjoy. And the key is the happiness. The key is the joy when you are doing that. Five minutes, ten minutes, or fifteen minutes with joy and happiness. Don't think that meditation is good, so it is why I have to do it. I, th- I think that maybe after a while you will drop it. Because you put too much effort on it. So do it with joy, with happiness, and with relaxation. So it is what I uh, would like to share with you in order that when you go home, you can uh, benefit from uh, the practice and bring practice uh, home. Mm, Thank you very much for being here, uh, for coming here to create the spiritual family together for us to enjoy. So each of us is very important and uh, meaningful for us. So I would like to so our gratitude uh, to all of you and wish you a safe trip home uh, tomorrow when you go home and also uh, bring practice uh, with you and uh, I hope that we will welcome you back in the future.